But doors of death cannot contain your glory.
All right, good morning everybody. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Let us just start our service as we always do, uh, just in some prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come into your house this morning, and as we enter these, this sanctuary, Lord, we pray that you will meet with each and every single one of us. Lord, I pray that today, we will feel your presence more than ever before. Lord, I pray that as we go about the service, every aspect will be to bring you glory. Lord, we just want to lift up everybody that's here this morning, those that are watching via uh, live streaming, those that will watch later. Lord, we just pray that as they, as they are watching and as they attend, Lord, that they seek your face, Lord, that they shall meet with you. Lord, we just want to lift up all the issues that we are struggling with this, at the moment in this world. We think of the pandemic. We think of the financial situation. We think of all the struggles that this world is experiencing at this time. And so, Lord, we just pray that you are the ruler of the world and, Lord, that you can fix or correct anything. And so, Lord, we just pray that you will guide those that are in control, sort out the issues, and Lord, just be able to rectify and bring back order into this world. We think of South Africa, we think of all the, our leaders, our government officials, all those in any form of power. Lord, we just pray that Lord, you will minister to them that their lives will be transformed, that they will seek your face before making decisions that impact so many. Lord, we pray that within our country, Lord, their lives will be given to you. We think of Brodell Family Fellowship. We pray this morning that this service will be an anointed service, as was the first and Lord, we pray that people's lives will be transformed. We think of Kempton Park, and even though we're not running services there at the moment, we just pray, Lord, that your will will be done. You will make a way forward there. 
and Lord, that we will soon be able to open with services. We think of new beginnings this evening and we just pray for an anointing there. We pray that as we minister to those people, Lord, on the street and that, Lord, that they will see the love of Jesus as we just share and fellowship with them. We think of Imapapeni Community Church and Kingsway and we lift them up to you this morning. We just pray that as they do service that there is an anointing there as well. Lord, we also lift up this morning our district and we think of Transcendental District and all the 10 other churches that are in our district. We pray this morning that there will be a great anointing, a great move in your spirit in each of those congregations this morning. We lift up our region and all of our churches within our region of the Southern African region. And Lord, we, again, we just pray that there will be a, a great move there, a great revival within our churches, and that lives will be radically changed. Lord, this morning we also lift up those that are not well. We think of those that are struggling this morning. Lord, those that are struggling with terminal illnesses. And Lord, we lift them up to you this morning. We just pray your peace and your comfort. Lord, in particular, we lift up our sister Patricia to you this morning. We just pray your peace and your comfort and your healing touch upon her, Lord. And Lord, you know what your will is there. And so, Lord, we just pray that you will comfort her in her time of need. We lift up Louise as well, Lord, and we just pray for that family, Lord. We just pray that your healing and your peace and your touch will be upon every single family member there as they, they deal with these issues, Lord. And so, Lord, we lift up all of our own congregation and those that aren't even named, Lord, that are struggling with health issues. We just pray, Lord, that you'll intervene into those situations. You'll bring, apart the right, or bring about the right doctors or whatever is needed there, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that as they seek you, that you will just give them that comfort. Lord, we lift up the youth and the youngsters and those that are studying, and those that are in school and those that are in university. And Lord, we just pray that, Lord, this younger generation, Lord, we pray protection over them. We just pray that they seek your face, that they will be able to seek wisdom and guidance from you, Lord. Lord, we lift up all of our communities and we think of the community around here. We think of Kempton community. We lift up all the community areas and we just pray, Lord, that those that are struggling financially, those that have lost work, those that are seeking work, Lord, we just pray for them this morning. We just pray that favor and, and blessings upon them, Lord, as they go out, Lord, we just pray that you will open up doors for them. We think of all of our, the business owners and we just pray, Lord, that you will lift them up. We just pray that you will assist them. And we know that some are faced with very difficult decisions, Lord. And so, Lord, we just pray that as they seek you, Lord, that you will just give them guidance and wisdom to make the right decision. And so, Lord, now we, we just spend a minute or so in our own quiet reflection, and maybe there's prayers that we raise up to you now, Lord. We just pray that you hear each and every single one of them. So, Lord, now as we continue with the service, we just pray anointing and favor upon it. And, Lord, we just pray that we bind anything that will go against the service. And, Lord, that it will bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Nice to see the faces again. Hang on. Let me see. Okay, I can see the faces now. Welcome. 
Um, isn't it wonderful? We had a challenging first service, but you know what? God is always on the throne, and so we just hand it over to God this morning. I'm going to ask Lucy if she will come and light the candle for us as we start the service. All right, so as we get into the service, let us start with some worship. Let us stand and lift our voices to the Lord.
Morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Just uh, weekly announcements and that, um, the, the two services and that, please, I just need you people to, other congregants, please, just to contact Pastor Anka to let us know that we keep the numbers on control. You know, COVID is still, still here with us and uh, we need to just follow all protocols and that. So please, if you could just let us all know that uh, when you will be attending, which service you'll be attending to. Then our Zoom meetings, uh, the weekly Zoom meetings, our Tuesday Elders Connection at 7 o'clock. Um, please feel free. If there's anything that you, that's on your hearts that we need to pray for and that, um, you know, we, we discuss things as far as the leadership of the church is concerned, concerning the church, things that need to be done and, and that sort of thing like that. So if there's anything, and at the same time, we also say a little prayer session as well. So if there's anything that we need to discuss or, or pray for and that, please let one of the elders or the pastors know. Wednesdays, we have our corporate prayer Zoom meeting, which is between, uh, between 7 and 7.30. Um, you, you don't need to pray, but if you, even if you want to attend and just follow in the prayer and that sort of thing like that, if there's anything also that's weighing on your heart that you need to discuss and that sort of thing like that, please feel free to join in the Zoom meeting and that. You know, there's just that, that feeling of peace afterwards once you know that um, you've come together. And, uh, you know, and, and, and in God's house, praise is the ultimate thing. And, and, and when we pray together and that sort of thing like that, it also makes you feel a lot better than that. So please, if there's anything that's on your heart that's weighing hard on you and we need to pray over it, please let the pastors or the one of the elders know in that. Uh, Thursdays, we have the Ladies' Connection. Uh, I know in Tunzana and uh, Pastor Anka joined in this week in that. And uh, I think I just need to clear the air as far as about two weeks ago that I did, uh, I mentioned the ladies' meetings that there was gossip. And uh, maybe I used the wrong wording over there and it was actually, it's not actually that way. You know, they, they do spiritually, they talk about uh, the good book. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's amazing what, what comes out afterwards and that and how spiritually connected and did you know this and did you know that and... Please, I, I feel free that you, ladies, please join in these meetings if you can. Good <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you. I'm sorry about that, ladies. I, I, I really did get it wrong. I used the wrong wording. And then on Fridays, uh, the men's connection, 6 a.m., bright and early. You know, and I think this has happened a few times that, um, you know, you always think you're stuck in the zone or there's a problem that, um, you know, you always try and keep to yourself. And... Meanwhile, at the back of the ranch, there's somebody else that's dealing with the same problem. But you know, when you bring it out in the open and we discuss it and that sort of thing like that, it really clears the air and it makes, you know, it makes for good talking and discussion and that. And it also brings in light on how to actually deal with the problem and that. 99% of the, God will help you through it, through prayer and that. But when you know, when you're in it together as men and that sort of thing like that, you know, it, it also makes a difference in that. And I, I encourage the men to get involved in that. And it's, it's really... A good time, and, and I must be honest, afterwards I really got a real good feeling of peace and know that I'm not in this whole thing myself at the end of the day. Church services, Sunday tonight, uh, New Beginnings, 5.30 p.m. And uh, as I said earlier on, you know, the, uh, the sad thing about it is that the, the numbers are increasing and uh, there's a lot of people in, in, in need, a lot of people that have been pushed to the streets, whether it be through drugs or alcohol or whatever the, the situation is, even fear. And, um, you know, it's a sad sight to see in that. And uh, I encourage you also, you know, you know, there's no need to come there and do anything, but enjoy and get involved in the, in the Word. But also, the, these people just need a little bit of love in their lives, you know. And it's, it's, no matter color, race, creed, where they come from, they're desperate. And, 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 you know, we just go there and show a little bit of love. Just show that we care. You, you don't want to understand what that does, that little bit of caring does for these people in their lives and everything like that. So I encourage you also on a Sunday evening... You know, instead of watching carte blanche, come and join us out there on the street and see the real thing for yourselves at the end of the day. And, it, and it's humbling times as well. But um, please feel free to join us on a 5.30. Uh, uh, the Magistrates' Courts in Kempton Park. Sorry about that. Um, I got so... Um, the, the Magistrates' Courts in Kempton Park, right next to the police station. On the corner there, we, we are there. You'll see the cross-up with uh, the blue fox, Pastor, Pastor Josias's car. And, um, you know, like I say, it's humbling times and that sort of thing like that. But these people, all they need in their lives is a little bit of a love, a little bit of care, a little bit of prayer at the end of the day, and that it makes a world of difference. Kempton Park Church uh, closed currently due to the numbers and that sort of thing like that and uh, all the COVID and that. We'll let you know once they, you know, once the disaster act has been closed off and we've managed, God's managed to get COVID under control. 
I mean, we'll be opening up KPC, but otherwise the, everybody that joins from Kempton Park will be here in the meantime. Then El Piso, the food donations and that um, our compassionate ministry side of the, the things here. We, um, please, we, any donations as far as food is concerned and that, please contact Pastor Trevor. You know, we're not just taking on any form of food. We, we also got to be specific in what we take on as well. It's not expensive stuff, but it's just the, the nutrients that the kids need and that we're feeding and that sort of thing like that. So please, if there's anything that you can donate or are willing to donate or want to show, you know, we'll throw a bit of, not throw, donate a bit of money to the, the situation and that um, please contact Pastor Trevor and that, you know, these, these kids, like I say, it's, it's desperate times with this COVID and that uh, a lot of people have lost their ways and that sort of thing. So the kids are left on their own. And our help will go a considerably long way as well at the end of the day because we already have roofs and food on the table and they, they need it as well in our lives and that, just to show a bit of love as well. All right, um, the basket, as we know, there's, there's thousands of names in here. And it's not only just in the basket, it's the people in the streets, new beginnings, those people that have all got a, a serious amount of darkness in their lives. And I'd just like to as we do every week, and the elders' prayers, and that, that we pray over this basket, and we pray for these people. Just today, uh, just to let you know that we actually placed two flowers in here today, and that means that uh, we've actually, we were notified this morning from another church that two people that's names are in have actually found the Lord, and we thank God for that as well. So as we keep on praying over this, you know, one by one, we'll, we'll bring them, and we'll let them see the light. Please, I ask you to raise your hands towards the basket and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, dear Lord, in prayer, and we come together and we pray over these names that are in the baskets, we bless the people that have actually placed these names in over here, dear Lord. May we bless them with the, the wisdom, the wording in their mouths, their actions, vitally important also to show these people the peace and understanding that comes from knowing that you in our lives at the end of the day, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I thank you for being the light, and I ask you, dear Lord, for your help through prayer in that, dear Lord, that we can bring these people out of their dark spaces, out of their crooked roads, dear Lord, and know that if they repent and, and show their ways in that, dear Lord, that you will forgive. You forgive everybody, dear Lord. We've all been down that road. And I thank you, dear Lord, in your loving name, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. As I've said to you before, in the scriptures we go around and it tells us that our Lord loves praise and worship, Amen. to give thanks to him. Amen. Let's raise our voices through our masks and that and let him know how thankful we are for having him in our lives. Please stand.
Be seated. Good morning, church. Have you got your word? Have you got your sword? Let's see it. Let's see the word of God, because that's what that's what helps us, right? Is the word of God sets the standard for us. Amen. Thank you. All right, don't you want to turn to we're going to talk this morning on breaking barriers. On breaking barriers. Um, but before we go there, let me just first um, because I'm now I'm adding a little bit of stress there to Nicole and the, the team there. And you see these wonderful flowers. Isn't that beautiful, eh? That's from, from yesterday from our sister Tertia Samoa's and her memorial service. And I thought it would be fitting just to those of us that maybe you didn't know who Tertia is. That's Tertia. That's an older Tertia. Uh, we saw some young photos. I uh, saw a young Pedro as well. But it was, a, it was a wonderful time of bringing glory to God. And so uh, we just want to recognize what a wonderful difference there is in a memorial service when it is for a believer. Sorry, sister, can you just put your mask on, please? Yes, please. All right. Good. Let's get into the Word, shall we? Thank you, uh, Nicole. Don't you want to go to, uh, to Mark, chapter, Mark chapter 1? And we'll start at verse 40. If you want to get into your Word, turn to Mark chapter 1 and verse 40. So we're going to talk about breaking barriers, breaking barriers today. I trust that you're ready. Uh, Colin mentioned two, but in this very 8 o'clock service, someone else in our congregation gave their life to Jesus. So there's three. So we can see the three uh, flowers that we can celebrate, that people have surrendered, that we've been praying for. There's a whole myriad of names in here. There's thousands. A long time ago, we counted there was th- there's thousands in here. And as we pray for the basket, every single time we pray for the basket, we're praying that God, salvation belongs to you. And so we just want to remember that, that we want to remember that Jesus saves. And so today we're going to be talking on that. We're going to be talking a little bit on, on the miracle of breaking barriers with Jesus. And I'm going to start at 140, but we're going to really talk a little bit about uh, uh, paralytic that is healed. And we've all heard the story, I'm sure we've all read it, or if you haven't, then maybe today's the first time. But I think it's also important just to start from a leper is cleansed. So won't you follow with me from Mark, Mark 1 and verse 40. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him, and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him. And he was cleansed. And verse 43, And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you may, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the matter so that Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside in deserted places. And they came to him from every direction. And then verse uh, chapter 2. And again he entered Capernaum after some days and was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive him, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which was the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. 
He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all. So that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Father God, we pray that your word would be exactly what you were ordained for it to be, Lord. Father, as we've read it, Father God, we pray that you'd be glorified, that you'd reveal it, that Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you in this service. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be the great counselor and that all glory would be yours. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen and amen. So one day Jesus comes to town. Four men find out about it. And naturally they want to hear about this famous rabbi, right? One of them says, we can't just go ourselves, guys. We've got to get our friend there. This could, this could really encourage him. And maybe these things they're saying about Jesus are true. Maybe, just maybe, Jesus can heal him. Wouldn't that be something? We've got to get him there. And to do that is going to make things harder logistically, but, but, but we're not going to think about ourselves. We're going to think about getting our friend there. You see, friends do that, don't they, church? True friends don't always think about themselves. They tell their friend he's going to see Jesus. They'll be picking him up. They'll be picking him up at nine o'clock. He doesn't have much choice because when his friends pick him up, they rarely pick him up. Now they get to the home where Jesus is teaching and it's packed. The New King James says, is, the New King James says, immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. The NIV says there was no room left, not even outside the door. So it's like people come into church and they haven't even got place outside the door. That's how packed the church is. Both doors open. People are standing looking through the windows maybe. Not too many windows in, in Old Testament times, but that's how packed it is. It's just people. Jesus is so close. It's so far. They can't get through to him. And this story is written before that verse was written in the Bible for the South African church. You know that verse? Unfortunately, COVID has sort of broken that. We set up your seating place, but thou shalt place the program on a chair and reserve thy seat. You know that verse? No, Pastor, we don't know that verse, right? But before COVID, that would happen. Listen, this is where I sit, right? I wonder after COVID, we should maybe change it up, Pastor Anka. We should maybe uh, rattle everyone and change everyone's seat. Because we all, we are creatures of habit, right? These friends hadn't counted on this. When they get to Jesus, they want to take their friend to Jesus. They hadn't counted on getting there and not being able to interact with Jesus. They'd been so, 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 so excited and now they shut out. And so they just watch for a while. Then one of them, the guy that's, uh, that's busy studying to be, uh, to be a manager, he says, let's have a brainstorming session. And remember, guys, there's no such thing as a, as a dumb idea. And we all got it right. In your group of friends, you can think of them. It's always the one that comes up with the most radical idea of all, right? Your butt that's full of the tattoos and the ear piercings. And a Trevor says, <laughs> and Trevor says, let's break through the roof. And everyone's like, whoa, there's silence. And the guy says, okay, I know I said there's nothing like a dumb idea, but let's, anybody else got an idea? Colin? But the hole in the roof idea is the only roof, is the only idea that they can come up with. And they realize that it's unorthodox, but it's the only idea that they can literally come up with today. That's the only way they're going to they're get to get their friend to see Jesus. I wonder, church, how often do we stop? 
short when we get faced with the first brick wall. So these guys get ropes. Because they decide they're not going to let anything stop them from seeing their friend seeing Jesus. In the Old Testament times, there was like a little, uh, not, mo- not all, but most houses, they walked up the steps and they get onto the roof and they decide they're going to start remodeling, guys. Now, if you're worried that this story is about uh, uh, soft on vandalism, just remember that the roofs back then consisted of wooden cross beams with matting of reeds and branches and dried mud in between. So these guys didn't need a wrecking ball. It was easily repaired. Now imagine this. Jesus is teaching, and because he's an excellent teacher, people are paying close attention. But suddenly the the distraction level sort of rises. There's a strange noise, and it's coming from the roof. And then you get some chunks falling off the ceiling. Dirt and dust and bits of reed begin to, to fall from the ceiling. Getting into people's eyes. Some bits landing on people's heads. Just a few flakes at first, but then all of a sudden it gets a little bit radical. And eventually all conversation ceases and Jesus himself stops talking and he looks up. Of course, Jesus knew what was coming, right? So everyone's looking up now and there's this hole in the ceiling. Four pairs of hands are seen around the hole, making the hole bigger and bigger and bigger. Imagine being the guy who owns the house. You agree to host a meeting and suddenly you're having a spontaneous skylight installed, right? And this is what your, your roof looks like. All of a sudden, you've got a big hole in it. And so the, the, the owner calls his insurance broker and he, he asks him whether he's covered. He says, Jesus is here. Can, it, can we call it an act of God? <laughs> These men are devoted to their friends. So they decide a little roofing is not going to stand in their way. And they serve their friend with the with a determination, with a boldness, and a certain kind of extraordinary creativity, isn't it? They become roof crashes. Why? All the more to get him to Jesus. Now, I've preached another message sometime too uh, about this and, and also that man's faith. Remember, it's quite a high, not as high as this seeming, but he had to trust his four friends that didn't drop him. There's also a faith based in that. He could have been kicking and screaming and said, well, not kicking, but screaming and saying, no, 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 no. Can you imagine that picture? All the more to get into Jesus so that Jesus can touch him, so that Jesus can heal him, so that Jesus can restore him. You see, that's what Jesus does for one, right? Jesus, church, if we allow him, gives us a heart transplant. If we allow him. But I've got to tell you, it goes further. We need to surrender our lives to Jesus. And maybe you have, maybe you have this morning and you have, then I say, praise God. But just this morning at 8 a.m., we, the same message was preached, and there was someone in this congregation who I'm sure everyone thought was fine, gave their life to the Lord. And so receive it in the fashion that it's preached. And receive the word of God as it, as it should be. If you have committed your life, that's great. But if this is foreign to you, then make today the day of salvation. Why don't you turn to Mark 8 verse 35. Mark 8 35 and then you can turn to Galatians 4. Mark 8 35 and Galatians 4. Mark 8.35 in the New King James says this, For whoever desires, this is Jesus speaking, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will what church? Will save it. Galatians 4, 6 and 7, verse 6 of Galatians 4. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son 
into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Have you got that assurance, church? Have you got that assurance that God is crying out, Abba, Father, in your life? Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son or a daughter or a child. If a son, then a, a heir of God through Christ. So the question for us, for us this morning is this. Are we fully committed to Christ? Are we fully? Are you fully committed to Christ? I've got a video clip for us that, that sort of speaks quite, quite clear about how committed are we to Jesus Christ. Don't you want to watch this? Jesus, I have decided to give you this. Really? Yeah. You know whoever sits here makes all the decisions, right? I know, and I'm always making decisions, but you make the perfect decisions, so you just sit right down and start making them. Wow, I'm honored. I mean, this feels great. <laughs> Kathleen, guess what? I just got my new credit card. It's time to go shopping. <laughs> oh, really? I thought your husband and you were going to pay off debt. Oh, yeah. I mean, money's kind of tight, but I figured he doesn't have to know about it. So do you want to oh. go with me? No. <laughs> no? Why? Uh, what I mean is, uh, I don't know. Um, so let me check my schedule, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, yeah, give me a call. Okay. <laughs> Kat, what's going on? What do you mean? Well, I'm kind of one cheek in it here. Look, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You wanted me to sit here, right? Well, of course. And whoever sits here makes all the decisions? Right. So what's the problem? Uh, there's not a problem. I just, I don't know what I was thinking. Really, please, here, sit down. As long as you're sure. I'm sure. Okay. okay. So, let's start over. Okay. All right. Kat, I noticed that you've been losing your temper a lot lately. Right. So, okay, Jesus, you know what? I know what you're going to say, but um, see, you, do? you don't know the whole situation, you know? Oh. I, well, all I'm saying is that your attitude is a decision. Yes, of course, but I have a lot going on right now. <laughs> well, I know you're under a lot of pressure. Pressure? Jesus, you don't understand pressure, okay? This I isn't working, Kat. What? We can't both sit on the seat. It's either me or it's you. Okay, I know. You know, I just, I didn't think it was going to be this hard, but here, just take it. No, I'm not going to take it. You have to give it to me. Okay, here. Kathleen, make a choice. I can't. You just did. What's your choice today? Have you made a commitment to Christ? Have you truly accepted Christ as your Savior? Have you totally surrendered to Christ? See, the, the truth is, church, we must individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior. It's not good enough just to know, oh, I know Jesus. I know of Jesus. It's more than that. John 1 verse 12 is very clear. We must receive Jesus Christ. The book of John 1 and verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. We must receive Jesus Christ. We must receive Jesus through faith. Ephesians, the book of Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I'm sure you've heard me quote this, or other pastors, plenty. But it says, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Because so often in our mankind, we just rush to how good we are, isn't it? Grace through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Not one of us can boast that we have been saved by our wonderful works. Amen, church. Nothing you do impresses God to that extent. Nothing. He's God. You are not. I am not. God is God. The God that we serve, when He speaks, He spoke this world into existence. Think about it. And then we want to come to God and say, well, because I've done this, here's my list. I'm, I'm good. It is grace through faith. If you want to turn to John 3, we're going to read 1 through to 8. John 3, please. 1 through to 8. Because, you see, church, when we receive Jesus Christ, we experience a new birth. And this is what this piece of scripture talks about. But I want to have you experience this. Where is Christ in your life? Because the easiest thing in our life is for us to say, oh no, I know Jesus, but have you truly repented? Have you truly committed your life to Christ? Have you truly made Christ the center of your life? 
And listen, church, this is no condemnation here. This is preaching under the anointing, I believe, of the Holy Spirit for you. It's for you and Jesus. It's for you and Jesus to know, I don't know. I'm just a man. But God knows and you know. You know. Amen, you know. <laughs> there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher. Come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So just remember your church, they don't even recognize him as Savior. They recognize him, him as coming, a teacher coming from God. Yet they've seen the miracle. So don't think because you see a miracle, that's it, you're saved. Jesus answered them and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is, which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Revelation 3.20, we are told very clearly that Jesus, we receive Christ through personal invitation. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, you need to open that door, church. Christ is there, He's ready, He's given His life for us, but you need to do something. Receiving Christ involves turning to God from yourself, repentance, and trusting Christ to come into your life, to forgive you of us, and, and to make us what He wants us to be. And so often, when really, when sitting in counseling or working with people, asking, when did you actually truly repent and, and bend the knee and say, Lord, here I am, everything that I am. Yes, Jono. Lord, with all my sin, Lord, forgive me of my sin. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to sin again. But have you done that? Or is it just about, oh no, I know Jesus, and Jesus is just this thing to you. Or is He your Lord? Or is He truly God? Because that's the difference. It's definitive, church. Just to agree intellectually that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died on the cross for our sins is not enough. It's not enough. Just to say, oh yeah. Nor is it enough to have an emotional experience. We receive Jesus by faith as an act of our will. By faith I come to God. By faith I say, I need, I need this God. I need Jesus in my, I need, by faith I say, I realize I was born a sinner. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And by faith I say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, by faith I say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. By faith I say, Lord, what is it that you have in store for me? I'm not going to live for myself now. Because you see, here's the difference. Here's, here's, two, here's the difference between a self-directed life and a Christ-directed life. Can you see the self-directed life on the left? Can you see where Jesus is? He's on the outside of the circle, man. And so you can know of Jesus. He can be just outside, but he can mean nothing to you. And listen, let's not fool ourselves and think people don't come to church in that, in that place. And we can come to church and we can feel so much better for a little while. And then you've got a, you've got a Christ-directed life. And truth be told, yes, we can go further, but this is about salvation. In this Christ-directed life, at times, Christ is not always on the throne. Sometimes He's just in the circle. But are you willing to say, Lord, here I am. Everything that I am to you. Have you done that? Have you said, Lord, forgive me? If you haven't done it, then maybe make it today. Because church, life is just too short. And then we say, I've just been this last week or two, I've just been, or definitely this last week, I've just been, I've just been, I've had such a sorrow. Because so often we don't speak to those that we love. We've all got family members. We've all got people in our lives that we know are the tough ones. But has God ever said to you, go and share Jesus with someone? Maybe it's that uncle or that aunt or whatever it is. And you haven't done it.
What are they going to think of me? But the burden, now I'm not saying go to that person now. I'm not saying you must, I'm saying you must do it under the unction of the Spirit. You know? And maybe you, maybe you see Tijat today and you, and you haven't, you don't really know about, you've never really bent the knee to Jesus and said, forgive me of my sins. If you haven't done that, if you haven't prayed that out loud and said, Lord, I receive you, Jesus, in my life. Church, do it today. If you have, praise God for that. If you have, praise God for that. But then, how are you living? And as I said in the first service, my brother Ian was sitting there where Joan and them are, and if we all know Ian, Ian doesn't talk much. I'm not saying everyone has to be a preacher. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, are you living for Jesus? Sometimes it's by your life. And sometimes your friends, uh, before uh, Pastor Trev was saved, what was it, two days ago, he was living he was living before we all have our stories, right? And I know, let me talk from my side. That's my testimony. I was saved when I was in high school. I led, I led a Bible study, etc. When I went to the army, I, I, while I was saved, I got into some real hectic stuff in the world. But you know what? Every night, I may even had been, been drinking quite a bit. You know what happened? The Holy Spirit convicted the heck out of me. Who's had that? Lying down in bed, and he just says to you, uh uh. And then you even say, You don't go to church because you can't go to church because when you go to church, the Lord sorts you. And so for 10 to 12 years, I try to run from God. I know it sounds stupid. Who's done that with me? You tried? It worked out well, eh, Gail? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. But you see, that's the thing. So even in the this, in this state of, I was saved, I knew Jesus as Lord and Savior, I try to run. But God just kept on bringing me around. And the last bit, God said, this is it. My boy, this is it. This is it. You need to choose. And here I am. Call it at all. So don't think, maybe you, yeah, and you're going like, yeah, I'm at that place. Because I know you can come to church. I'm not naive enough to know. You can come every Sunday to church. You can still be in that wilderness, people. So if you're there, maybe today's the day for you to go, Lord, here I am. Maybe it's about a recommitment, a recommitment thing. Or maybe it's about you going, I've never done this and I want to bend the knee today. We're going to have communion shortly. But are you ready? Are you ready? If your last days are numbered today, are you ready to go and stand before God? Are you? Have you got the assurance that I am saved? I'm good. Not about your works. Keep in context to what I've said. And if you are, praise God. But if there's a little bit of going, oh, I'm not sure. You see, church, here's the thing. God knows the heart. And He's not so concerned with our words. And so I ask again in closing, where do you stand today? I cannot believe that if you're a Christ follower that you'll not have a heart for other people. God changed my heart radically. Jesus Christ did not, Jesus Christ was in the midst of all the issues. When people want spiritual advice, do they look to you? Do they even know that you are saved? Where do you stand with Jesus today? I'm going to ask Pastor Trev to come up. I want you to open your boxes, please. We have our communion boxes. And if you all know what to do, you can open up at the top. The top one is your wafer. And so while you're opening up church, just remember, this is not a word of condemnation. It's a word of conviction. If you are convicted, then praise God for the Holy Spirit. And let the Holy Spirit do His work within your life. If you are feeling condemned, then you bind that in the name of Jesus. And you say, I'm a child of God. Amen.
So now we're going to go into a time of prayer. I'm going to ask you first, I'm going to ask those, there be anyone in this congregation who feels they've never committed their life to Christ. I'm just going to ask you to raise a hand. I'm going to ask everyone's eyes to be closed and heads to be bowed. And then I'm going to ask if you want to recommit. And then we're going to partake in communion. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. All eyes are closed, all heads are bowed, please. Well, God, we come before you this morning. And we are mindful of your extraordinary grace in our life. Mm. And so, Lord, we pray now, if there be anyone who has committed to you, who feels today is the day that they need to commit their lives to you, that they would raise their hands, Lord, as Lord and Savior. Father, if they've never forgiven, ask you for forgiveness of sins. Father, if they're feeling now, today is the day. Won't they raise hands right now? We see that hand. Praise God. Yes, praise God. All right, church, let's all pray this together out loud. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, Jesus. I need you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. sins. I open the door of my life and I receive you as my Savior Savior and my Lord. Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins sins. and giving me eternal life. life. Take control of of the throne of my life. Control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person. Make me the kind of person. You want me to be. Want me to be. And if there be anyone here today, right now, that wants to recommit their life, perhaps you have committed and you're saying, Lord, I've just been a little bit off target. I've been wandering in a desert place, and I just want to say, Here I am, Lord, raise your hands now. I see that end. See that end. See that end. See that end. Great. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God. I just want to recommit myself to you. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the grace and the mercy that you have freely given to me. And I recommit to you today, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. What's the dream? So on the night they were betrayed, uh, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Mighty Father, we thank you for the body of Jesus Christ. The broken body of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray, all glory and honor be yours, Lord. As we partake, may it be found acceptable and pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name. Likewise, afterwards, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he blessed it and said, This is my blood shed for you and for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Jesus. Amen. You, Trent? Father, we thank you for the blood that you shed for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. And we are mindful that it was your son's blood that saves us. And so this morning, as we've partaken in this, we give thanks And we remember the ultimate sacrifice your son paid for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Do the offering there. All right, we're going to partake in the offering. And those that are at home will know uh, it comes up on the screen. You can do an EFT if you aren't able to uh, be here personally. Um, So if we can just bow our heads as we just take up or pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we just know that you are the great provider. Everything we have comes from you. And so this morning, Lord, as we just give back a small token of our appreciation, Lord, we just pray that you will use it to bless others and to build your kingdom. And we pray all of this now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand and let's receive the benediction. And now may the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, And indeed the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with us as we leave your Lord. May we know that you are God and we are not. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God turn his face toward you and grant you his glorious peace. Have an awesome day with God.
Shared the feast with hearts and 